15-year-old is talking to me about this, then um, when I was seven, I did publish my first book. It's called Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And more recently, I published my second book. It's called Dancing Fingers, and it's a book of poetry that I wrote with my older sister, Adriana. So uh, I really love to write, and I've written two books so far. And one of the things which I know a lot of students ask me about and, and tell me about is how they write from prompts very often, either in class or on their state test. So I wanted to figure out, you know, how can I uh, talk about this, is this issue? How can I help other students? So um, tell me, what, what do you think of prompts? What, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of prompts? Are you Remember uh, loud. Uh, Thinking. Say it louder. You gotta be louder. Thinking. Thinking. Yes, that's right. You have to think. What else? Jamaica. Have to write a lot. You have to write a lot. Say it louder. Yeah. Okay. No. Bubble. I'm sorry. Is it a bubble? A thinking map. Okay, thinking map. And one more thing. What's the thing you think of? You're writing. I just in the test. I mean, I just in the. He said getting a good grade. Getting a good grade. Okay. So when you think of writing prompts, you might think of thinking really hard. You might think of a state test. I'm hoping that whatever you think of, your face doesn't look like this. You're like, oh no. Um, so today we're going to be looking at some ways that we can make the prompts that we get, how we can make responding to them easier because prompts really don't have to be hard. In many cases, they're really not designed to confuse you or to make you have a really hard time thinking. They're just designed to see uh, how you write well and what are your, where your skills are. So when you look at a prompt, just read the prompt carefully. Look for keywords. Think about the purpose of the prompt. What do I mean when I say purpose of the prompt? Javar? The topic? The topic? Yes, that's part of your purpose. but. Another thing that you would get with the purpose of the prompt, what, what else might you get from looking at the purpose of the prompt? Why did you write it? Why did you write it? That is a very important part of purpose. So when you're looking at the purpose of the prompt, you're asking yourself, what am I trying to do in responding to this? What, do the, what does the prompt want me to do? Ask yourself three questions. What is my purpose? Who is my audience? What is my perspective? So we just talked about what purpose is. It's what you're trying to do or what the prompt wants you to do in your writing. What about who is my audience? Who is your audience when you're writing a, on a state test or responding to a prompt? The person that you're writing to? The person that you're writing to? Well, uh, let's say, for instance, if I'm taking a state test and I'm responding to a prompt, then whoever grades that test uh, would be my audience. If you're writing in class, if your teacher has given you a prompt and you're responding to that and your teacher is going to be grading it, then your audience would be your teacher. If you're, uh, if you're writing a letter to your mom or dad, then they would be your audience. So audience can be different in different situations. Um, and the audience is basically just, yeah, whoever's reading what you create. What is my perspective? This is a slightly harder word. What does perspective mean? Go ahead, Abigail. The way you look at it. The way you look at it. Excellent. So when I'm thinking about a topic, say for instance, um, should schools have uniforms or something like that, my perspective is my opinion on the issue, the point of view that I take, how I look at it. So your first question, and probably one of the most important, is what is my purpose in writing this? Why would this be so important to know? Why do you have to know your purpose in writing Jamie, thank you. Um, say loud. If you know your purpose on writing, you have to know what you need to write about and why you have to do it. To know why you have to write. To know why you have to write. That's excellent. Yes. Um, part of it is definitely about when you're writing from a prompt, then you should you should know you know why am I writing this? What is what is the point of what I'm writing? And then another thing is that when you know your purpose, you're able to make every line, everything that you're saying, work toward that purpose more effectively. Is my purpose to persuade? In that case, would be persuasive writing. 
Is it to inform or explain something that would be expository writing? If it's to entertain, it might be narrative writing. So, um, so what's an example of something, what's a pro what might a prompt that's trying to get you to convince someone sound like? What might a persuasive prompt sound like? It sounds like a little Can I Say it loud. Buy this product. I'm sorry? You said to buy a product and you're selling a product? That is a very good example of, of persuasive writing. If there's, if you've ever seen advertisements or even an item on a menu, you know, a lot of times items on menus are designed to sound really good so that you order them. Uh, and then, uh, let's say you get, so how does for that persuasive idea translate to a test or to a prompt? Well, if you get something that says, lists the reasons why so-and-so should or shouldn't happen, or do you think that this should happen or not happen, you know, anything where they're asking you to list the reasons, share your opinion, support your opinion, that would probably be persuasive writing. Expository writing, on the other hand, is where you inform. So your, your point is not to convince readers that penguins are so awesome, your point might be to tell the reader about penguins and where they live and what they do. Narrative writing, your point wouldn't be to tell about penguins, and your point wouldn't be to convince that penguins are so great. In narrative writing, you might tell a story about a penguin family or something like that. So there's the, those are just a few different examples. Let's say you have this, this one topic, penguins, but whether it's persuasive writing or expository writing or narrative writing, will change it. It'll decide whether it's an article about how awesome penguins are, whether it's an article about or an essay about penguins and, and their habitat, or a funny story about a penguin family. So you see how there could be those differences with your purpose. So these are examples of kind of persuasive ideas, advertisements. This is more informative when you're learning, when you're listening to someone give a speech. Uh, those would all be when you're being informed. And then entertainment. If you're listening to a funny story or your friends are telling you something, that would be, their purpose would be to entertain. How many of you, raise your hand if your friends, when they tell you a funny story, are trying to, are trying to inform you about all this really important information? I don't see too many raised hands. Sometimes, you know, sometimes our friends tell us stories if they need to uh, get across something really important, but most of us, our friends probably tell us really funny stories because they want to make us laugh, because they want to be funny. Uh, and, and so you see that, again, that how your different purposes affect what you write or what you say. You might even have more than one purpose. For example, when you write an email to a friend, you might have all three purposes to inform your friends, friend that your parents bought a huge trampoline to entertain your friend with a story of how you already bounced off the trampoline into the yard and to persuade your friend to come over to your place after school. So that's an example of how you might uh, do several things at once. Here's a little activity. Take a look at each of the following assignments and name the author's main purpose to explain, to persuade, or to entertain. Write a letter to some slimy aliens that lists the reasons why they shouldn't destroy planet Earth. What is the purpose? Okay. Lots of people would die. But what's the purpose? What's the purpose? What are we trying to do here? Is it to persuade, to explain, or to entertain? Kimberly? Entertain. Entertain? That might be part of it. But let's say let's say that this is a pretty serious letter. So you're actually imagining that aliens are out to destroy planet Earth and you're writing to them and you're like, you know, you shouldn't destroy planet Earth, lots of people might die, blah, blah, You're listing the reasons, what kind of writing would that be? Okay. Persuasive? Persuasive, yes. Very good. So um, this, this would be more of an example of persuasive writing because it's, you're seeing write a letter, list the reasons why. A lot of times if you see words like list the reasons why, if it's your opinion, if it's trying to convince someone, then yeah, it would be persuasive. However, there, it could, you might look at it and let's say it was something like uh, tell a story about slimy aliens who are about to destroy planet Earth, then that would then be narrative writing. 
time, but this example is uh, closer and persuasive. Write instructions for building a go-kart. Is this designed to persuade, explain, or entertain? Love it. Inform. Inform. Yes, very good. Inform and explain. I, I was using sort of interchangeably. Very good. So this is to inform the reader. Uh, when you write instructions for building a go-kart, yeah, you're, you're usually not convincing, you're usually not trying to convince people, hey, go out and buy a go-kart because they already have, or they bought the parts. <coughs> so when you are writing instructions for building a go-kart, then it's to inform, to explain uh, to your reader. When you know your purpose, then you can make each sentence you write work toward that purpose, to inform, to explain, to persuade, or to entertain. Who is my audience? Uh, why would knowing who your audience is be helpful to you? Player. Maybe, uh, you would... Maybe. Maybe teachers, please pick up your students from the cafeteria. Sorry. Maybe, uh, say if it was your family, and you know your family's personality and what they like, maybe if they all like the same thing, you could write a story about what they like. That's a very good one. Yeah, if you know your audience, if you know their personality, if you know what they like, uh, if you were writing a story for your family, for instance, you probably know your, your family pretty well, your brothers or sisters or your parents, you know what they like, so you could write something that would be uh, along those lines. But, you know, what's a little bit hard is when you're, when you're taking a test, and if it's not graded by your teacher, if it's a state test or something like that, then you don't always know who your audience is, or occasionally you may not know your audience very well. So what do you do in situations like that? what they've said, who's gotten higher scores, uh, what, what causes higher scores, what causes lower scores, so looking at that kind of thing. Um, but another thing is definitely when you don't know your audience very well, you want to maybe explain things more thoroughly. So I'm going to be going over that a little bit as we go into so Knowing your audience is very important. When you know your audience, you know what information you need to include in your writing. If you're writing an email to your sister or brother about your mom, you don't need to explain who your mom is. You don't need to be like, dear sister, brother, our mom works at this place. She uh, really likes to cook this, you know, because your sister and brother probably already knows that. But if you're writing an essay about your mom for class and not everyone in the class knows your mom, it would be important to provide details like that. The important thing is to remember that your audience might not know much about you or your life, so it's really important to introduce everything you're saying, give the reader a context. And even if your audience does know you, when you're writing for a test, it's important to introduce each topic and explain who you're talking about, because you often get extra points for being clear, for explaining things, giving details. So if you're mentioning your friend Annie for the first time, be sure to introduce her. If you just wrote something like Annie rode around the corner on her BMX, then we're left wondering, well, who is Annie exactly? You would want to say, Annie, my friend from down the street, rode around the corner on her BMX. And if you're writing for an older audience or someone who might not know what a BMX is, you would want to explain that, a BMX for How can we make this more clear for our audience? I live in Harrisburg with Tyler, Jesse, Nana, Snowball, and Mom. Every day I ride to Burke Hills. I sit next to Pacey and Catherine. We are learning about quarks. Mrs. Huxley says I am a natural. Afterward, I go over to Sasha's. So looking at this, what is this about? Who are Pacey and Catherine? What is Burke Hills? Who's Mrs. Huxley? Who's Sasha? Who's Tyler, Jesse, Nana, Snowball, and Mom? This is all not exactly super clear just on the first read through. So let's um, write up a better version of this. I'm going to move the camera over here. How can we make this more clear?
What are some things we might explain? Oh, sorry. Larry? Maybe you can tell how maybe you can tell how Tyler is, how he looks like when he lives. Give some details. Give some details? Excellent. So that would be a big part of it. Um, what else might we do? Looking at this sentence again, I live in Harrisburg with Tyler, Jesse, Nana, Snowball, and Mom. What is the first thing we could do to this sentence? Do for this sentence? Jacob? Tell where Harrisburg is? I live in Harrisburg. Uh, so, yeah, what state? Maybe uh, that would help quite a bit. So, what state should Harrisburg be in? Let's pick a state. There's probably Harrisburgs in many different states. But. She's a Californian. Okay, I live in Harrisburg, California. Uh, with now, who do you think Tyler, Jesse, Nana, Snowball, and Mom are? Jacoby. Who do you think all those people are? about if it would probably be her family considering that her mom is there and also Snowball might be a cat, Nana might be her grandma. So I live in Harrisburg, California with my family. Who are Tyler and Jesse? Uh, Isaac. Um, maybe her brothers. Very good. My brothers, Tyler, ah, oops, little spellings. Tyler and Jesse. Who else is listed? Nana, my maybe that's usually a term for grandma. Snowball. Do you think snowball is usually used as a name for people? No. No. So who might snowball be? Okay. Yeah. Snowball. Yeah. Snowball the cat. Yeah, it could be any kind of animal. It could be a cat. It could be a dog. Um, so let's put just snowball the cat for. Our purposes um, and and mom. Every day I ride to Burke Hills. What do you think Burke Hills is? Dion. A person. A Burke Hills person. Um. Rebecca. Our school. A school. Yes. Very good. So, what are some of the clues that might tell us that? Well, for one thing. She lives with her family, so she's probably not she's probably not grown up. Um, I mean, it's possible, but usually if you live with your mom, your grandma, your brothers, then you're probably you know around school age. Every day I ride to Burke Hills. So where do you go every day? School. Uh, and so generally we look at this. We've made enough clear. We made it clear that she lives with her family, so she's probably young enough to be going to school every day. It's probably not a retirement center. <laughs> I think we can safely say that. Every day, I ride to Burke Hills, my school. I sit next to, who are Pacey and Catherine? Ashley. Her friends. I sit next to my friends, Pacey, ah. Casey and Catherine. In class, we are learning oops, about quarks. Sorry, the typing is a little delayed. Um, Mrs. Huxley would be my teacher. Yes, very good. My teacher, Mrs. Huxley, says I am a natural. After school, I go over to, who is Sasha? Babysitter, friend? What do you think? Alexa? Um, friend. Friend. It laughed. Friend. Okay, so let's compare the set and the passages. I live in Harrisburg, California with my family. My brothers, Tyler and Jesse, Nana, Grandma, Snowball, Cat, and Mom. Every day I ride to Burke Hills, my school. I sit next to my friends, Pacey and Catherine. In class, we are learning about quarks. 
My teacher, Mrs. Huxley, says I'm a natural. After school, I go over to my friend Sasha's. So this is a whole lot more clear than I live in Harrisburg with Tyler, Jesse, Nana, uh, etc. Every day I ride to Burke Hills, I sit, sit next to Pacey and Catherine, we're learning about parks. So you see how by explaining for our audience who doesn't know who these people are, then we're making it more clear. Now before you get started writing, uh, you might do something called pre-writing. How many of you have done pre-writing before? Raise your hand. I see quite a few raised hands. So a lot of us have probably done some kind of pre-writing before. It might have been uh, mapping out your ideas, it might have been making an outline. Whatever kind of pre-writing you used, uh, it's, it's often very handy, especially when you're responding to a prompt. So for instance, um, let's say you have a prompt about uh, computer games, and you're supposed to say, why do you think computer games are good or bad? Um, then you might say, well, computer games teach kids valuable skills is your main idea. Games and kids who get on their computer to play games develop uh, different kinds of skills like typing or uh, good hand-eye coordination. So you might have all these different reasons, and you see how you main ideas, reasons, and then examples. So that might be a good way, especially if you're writing something where you have a bunch of different points that you want to prove. And another thing you can do is building an outline. Where is you going to be built an outline before? Oh, I see maybe a couple ways in. So not too many of you have built outlines before. Uh, this, this can be handy in some cases where you might be writing um, let's say an essay, and you really need to organize your thoughts. So an outline is another one of those tools that you can use to uh, organize your writing. This is an example of a really formal outline, one that I was doing for my English class. Um, and so this is the kind of outline you might do more at the high school level. When you're writing for a prompt, you can do a fairly informal outline to organize your ideas. So it could look just like, you know, here's my idea, here are my reasons, one, two, three, something like that. You might put my introduction, paragraph one. This is what I'm trying to say in my in what I'm writing. Paragraph two would be one of your reasons with your examples. Paragraph three, another one of your reasons. Computers help kids develop basic computer skills with more examples. Paragraph four, computer games encourage kids to think with some examples. And then paragraph five might be your conclusion where you would summarize what you just said and maybe end with a reason or an image that would remind the person about uh, the purpose of your essay. So next time you're about to scold your kid for wasting time on a computer playing games, take a moment to consider what kind of skills you want him or her to develop. So that might be the ending for that five paragraph essay. Uh, and you don't have to write an outline for every, every prompt response. It's particularly handy either if your response might be kind of long or if you really need to uh, organize it very well. So outlines can be quite handy. How do you guys, when, when you start, when you look at a prompt and you start writing, how do you organize your ideas? How do you uh, think about how you want it to be? Jalen? Um, tree map? No, flea map. Okay. Great. Right. What else? Great. Uh, brainstorming. Brainstorming. And what map? Data. Circle map. Circle map. Great. So there are all kinds of maps that you can use to really visually see your ideas and how they connect, uh, and those are excellent to use. So there's lots of different forms of pre-writing that you can do. And the purpose of pre-writing is to uh, understand where your ideas are going, um, how they connect, and how you can turn it into a better piece of writing. So a lot of times it'll help you also create something uh, much better organized. Uh, so this is actually from uh, a Tennessee state writing assessment, which I was looking at from the uh, 09 to 10 year. And the, they had a writing situation where you're supposed to look at a role model, uh, who is a role model. And so then they had some sample responses that were scored. And so this one was one of the ones that got one of the lowest scores, and you can probably tell why, because it doesn't really address the question. It said it was saying that a role model helps you make models into play and art. So it, was, it wasn't the right purpose. You're supposed to, in this prompt, looking at it, then it says, uh, think about what qualities your role model has, who's your role model in life. 
So looking at the prompts here, you see how they didn't quite understand the purpose reading through the prompt. And then, so again, it shows you why that's uh, quite important to understand what the prompt was trying to get at. And then this one, on the other hand, does understand the purpose quite well. It's talking about the mom. My mom opens the sliding door carefully and yells, girls, come inside, it's getting dark. I've always looked up to my mom, like she's a superhero, and I want to be just like her when I get older. Who is your number one role model? This is a tough decision to make, but if you really think, it can be easy. I want to be just like my mom when I grow up because she puts family first, she cares about everyone, and she's an amazing cook. This is, I think that everyone can agree that this is probably a better response than, than the two lines. So when you see a response like this, there are a few things that make it a good response. There's a few reasons why I got a high score. What are some of the things that are good about this prompt response? Hi. I'm sorry? It's much longer. It's much longer. That's part of it. It expands more. Uh, and you can have a good response even in a short, in a, in a fairly short response, but you want to make sure that you get out a lot of ideas and reasons across. So what else is good about it? Science. It's neater. It's neater. It's definitely a lot neater. The ideas are organized. The handwriting is <laughs> actually, uh, you can read it. What else? She has more detail. She has more detail. Okay. No. It's on topic. I'm sorry? It's on topic. Yes, it's on topic, definitely. Uh, so looking at this, then you also see where it's very well organized. So you have the person saying, I want to be just like my mom when I grow up. So that's her main point. Uh, she's saying, I want to be just like my mom when I grow up. And then she's going in, and she's not just stopping there, she's explaining the reasons why she wants to be just like her mom when she grows up. She's an amazing cook, that's one reason. She cares about everyone, and she puts family first. So you see those three reasons and a main idea. It's, you can actually see how it's very well organized, and then in her following paragraph she goes and expands on those ideas. Understanding the prompt's purpose and answering the question being asked with the response, like in this example, my superhero is my mom. That's answering the question. Then thinking about the audience, how much do you need to explain? She understood that they wouldn't know her mom, and she has to talk about her mom uh, in more detail. And then coming up with supporting details or reasons to support your perspective or opinion. She listed all those reasons that you saw. Choosing the right words. Use specific words. This is a very important part of when you're responding to the prompt. You can have some very good organization. You might have a great idea, but you also want to make sure that the word choice you use, the details you include, uh, that it's great word choice. So, um, for instance, an example of a prompt response that might not be so good would be if you started with the same word every sentence. For example, the word nice. If you kept on describing, you, you'd say, my friend is nice, my mom is nice, my teacher is nice. You might want to replace the word nice by a word that's more specific, uh, that describes in which way the experience of the person is positive. Was it exciting, peaceful, safe, beautiful, amazing, colorful, cozy? If you were talking maybe about a vacation or a trip. If you were talking about a person, you might say friendly, kind, compassionate, something like that. Tip number two, place general words with specific words. What is a general word? Freer. Um, I, uh, I, uh, yeah. Kimberly? Pretty. What? Pretty. Printing? Printing? Well, I mean, printing, printing is, it's actually fairly specific. So um, printing is, you know, saying what you're doing, what's happening. Um, a general verb might be something like, uh, I, or a general word, if I said, I went to the place. How many of you say, I went to the place, when you're telling your friends about your weekend? You're like, hey, I went to the place. You know, you probably wouldn't say that. Why wouldn't you say something like, I went to the place? Hi. Because you're, you're not saying what specific place you went to. Exactly. You're not saying what specific place you went to. Another thing is, even if uh, a lot of us, we might say something like, I went to the amusement park. I went to 
of the mall or something like that. But we might even say, I uh, took a car or my parents drove me. You know, you would actually say how you went exactly. That can be important detail. You might not necessarily say exactly how you got someplace when you're talking with a friend, but it could be important to, instead of saying, I went to someplace, I went, uh, you, instead of using the same general word all the time, you might say something like, I took a plane, I took a train, I drove, I walked, however you went to somewhere. So replacing general words with specific words is a good idea. Just as you would want to use more specific words in real life, you want to use more specific words when you're responding to a prompt. Here are a few examples. A dog, you could say a type of dog, like a poodle, tree, to elm, nice, to friendly, loud, to booming. These and the thing about these words as well is that they help whoever's reading your poem really see what you're talking about in their head. Add specific details and descriptions about what things look like, smell like, feel like, and sound like. You might talk about the excitement as you went down the roller coaster, how the cold wind blew past your face and you screamed out loud and you thought everyone around for miles could hear you, instead of just saying, I had a fun time at the amusement park. Why would you include all those details? Pizza and then you don't eat some part and it gets really gross in there. Yeah, 
would probably smell pretty bad. What are some other details we could add about this messy room? Jacob? I can barely sleep on my bed. There's so many toys on it. Okay. I could barely sleep in my bed. There were so many toys all over. And what a final detail. Can I? There was an old sandwich in my pillow. Oh, gross. <laughs> there was an old sandwich in my pillow, which had been there for how long? Eight years. Eight years. I lost my cat inside my room. There were greasy pizza boxes littered on the floor, some of which were starting to stink. I could barely sleep in my bed. There were so many toys all over. There was an old sandwich in my pillow, which had been there for eight years. You could say that was a scary little, you know, sometimes. <laughs> people, people, people do like the announcements on Halloween on TV or something. They always manage to have that scary little voice in the back, oh, like the music going in the background. You could probably. <laughs> do that for the eight years from. Um, so, so, looking at this, is this, are these sentences more fun? Are they more interesting than my room is messy? Yeah. Yes. So, and it's, and you know what else? It's really easy to do. You just think of details, you think of fun description to add, and you can turn a sentence like my room is messy, which is like, eh, okay, um, into something that's really funny. So, uh, this and the best part about it is that it's not just fun. It's also something that is it's good It's it's great for your writing. It's good to practice the writing skills So let's review our goals. What do we want to do when we're responding to a prompt? Uh, from the rubric, so this is something that a lot of people. Oh, yeah, I see racing to go ahead Hi. Uh, I want to write on the assigned topic. You write about an assigned topic? Very good. So when you respond to a prompt, then you have a topic. You want to stick to that topic and understand what the purpose is that they're assigned. What else? Jacob? What the purpose is? Understanding what the purpose is. Excellent. 